Minichem activity number 23 and the corresponding videos, we will be looking at the periodic trends in the periodic table. And I start off with the following question. Can we predict the properties of elements based on their position in the periodic table? And the answer to this question is, remarkably, yes. The periodic table was first organized based on classifying elements according to their properties and arranging them, noticing the possibility of trends for these elements. Now that you know something about the electronic structure of atoms and the fact that elements have their electronic structure related to the position in the periodic table, it should be no surprise to you that we can look at the electronic structure of an element to help us predict the periodic properties. Now we will be looking at the periodic trends for the atomic radius, ionization energy, electronegativity, and ionic radius. We will look at the first three in this video, and we'll look at ionic radius in our live sessions. Now we use the words trends, but this particular case we're also talking about periodic trends, hence the name periodic table, in that the trends have a periodicity, the patterns repeat themselves. Hopefully the idea of periodicity will become clear as we look at some examples together. So let's start off by looking at the underlying reason for these periodic trends. So the top of your sheet in the chem activity number 23, there is the preamble. We state that the trends can be predicted by considering the balance between increasing nuclear charge because, of course, in going from one element to the next, we're increasing the number of protons in the nucleus. An increase in repulsion between the electrons. So with every increase in the number of protons, there's also an increase in the number of electrons, and thereby an increase in repulsion between the electrons. And the location of the valence electrons relative to the nucleus. So the trends can be predicted considering a balance of these three things. It can actually get quite complicated. So in order to simplify, I'd like you to keep in mind that generally across the periodic table, an increase in nuclear charge is the most important change. So across the periodic table, going for instance from lithium through to neon, of course we're increasing the number of protons, we're increasing the number of electrons, more protons in the nucleus, more electrons in the valence shell. The most important thing here is in fact that there are more protons in the nucleus. The electrons are attracted to a greater nuclear charge. Going down the periodic table, an increase in distance of the valence electrons to the nucleus is the most important change. The valence electrons are located in valence shells that are further and further from the nucleus. So again, while there are many changes occurring, the changes can be complicated. If you can keep in mind these two basic ideas, increase in nuclear charge across the periodic table and an increase in distance of the valence electrons down the periodic table, you will be able to predict a number of trends related to the properties of elements in the periodic table. Let's look at the first trend. The first trend has to do with the atomic radius. So here we have, in teaching model number one, a diagram which shows how the atomic radius changes in going from one element to the next. I provide you both the numbers corresponding to the radius in picometers, so I'll just put down that you have to keep in mind that the units for each of these numbers is picometers, in other words, 10 to the minus 12 meters. Also, I show you diagrammatically the size of each of the elements so that you can be comparing them. Now, as you might expect, the atomic radius is an estimation of the size of the atom as determined by the position of the valence electrons. The outer edge of an atom is where the valence electrons are. Of course, this is kind of weird because, of course, the valence electrons are waves and they can't be located with any degree of certainty. You can only talk about the probability of finding the electron. Yet, remarkably, an atom behaves something like a billiard ball, something like a sphere. So we can think of each of these atoms as being spheres with a certain radius. Now how the radius is determined depends on the nature of the element and the technique. One way to picture this is if you have a pair of atoms together, the radius will be half the distance between the nuclei of these two atoms. 
This can be determined by techniques like X-ray crystallography. However, the exact measurement may differ depending on who did the measurements, the technique they use, and so I would not pay too much attention to the exact numbers here. And of course, we would never ask you for the exact numbers of the atomic radius. But rather, you need to know more or less the trend across the periodic table and down the periodic table. Now, just looking at the diagram, it should be pretty obvious what these trends are. Across the periodic table, I think you can see that the size or the atomic radius of the atom decreases. And so I'll just summarize it here. Down the periodic table, hopefully you can see that the size of the atom or the atomic radius increases. Now again, this doesn't apply in all situations. So for instance, when you compare aluminum to gallium, you see that in fact the size goes down. These anomalies are difficult to explain and again may be tied to how these measurements are being made. I'd like you to be aware of the general trend. So one of the things that we can ask you is to simply state what is the trend of that particular property. So again, across the periodic table, the atomic radius goes down. Down the periodic table, the atomic radius goes up. Now, as we have four different trends that we'd like you to know, it would be perhaps difficult and confusing just to memorize the trends. So rather, I'd like you to understand why we think these trends happen. And again, these trends are related to the electronic structure of the atoms in each of these cases. So let's work on developing an explanation. In this activity, I'm trying to provide you with a scaffold to develop an explanation when you answer a question, for instance, on an assignment or a quiz or a test. And I hope that you'll think of the scaffold when you answer such a questions and be able to develop a beautifully constructed, well thought out answer. So here we go. As I stated before, across the periodic table, the most important thing is the fact that the nuclear charge changes. And what does the nuclear charge do? Well, it increases. And so if I ask you to explain a trend across the periodic table, that should be your first statement. The nuclear charge across the periodic table increases. Period. That's all you need to say. Well, what is the outcome of the nuclear charge increasing across the periodic table as a result of more protons in the nucleus? Well, the valence electrons, which determine the size of the atom, will be more attracted to this greater nuclear charge. So the force of attraction between the valence electrons and the nucleus would increase. If the attraction has increased, well, those valence electrons will be pulled closer to the nucleus. And indeed, that's what we're seeing across the periodic table. And so the radius will, of course, decrease. So you can put this together in one complete sentence or a small paragraph. Across the periodic table, the nuclear charge would increase. This will result in the force of attraction between the valence electrons and the nucleus to increase. As a result, the valence electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus. Therefore, the atomic radius decreases. That's the kind of explanation that we're looking for. Now, down the periodic table, I use the example of helium. But note that we can look at any of the columns. Of course, the most important thing is that the valence electrons are further from the nucleus. And well, if it's the valence electrons that determine the size of the atom, well, therefore the valence electrons are further from the nucleus and the atomic radius will increase. These are the kind of explanations that we're looking for. You can see that we're making use of the electronic structure and the position of the valence electrons to be able to explain these trends. Now that we've been through this once, you'll see that it is essentially the same process to explain the other trends that we'll be looking at. But before we look at the other trends, we should look at one other feature concerning the atomic radius. Thus far, we have looked at how we can state the trend and how we can explain the trend. Now we will see if we can make use of our understanding of the trends and knowledge to be able to make a prediction about how the trend changes for a series of given elements. So this is addressed in the first key question. It says here, arrange the following according to decreasing size. Now this kind of question can be asked for any of the different sorts of trends, but of course here we're focusing on the atomic radius. You do not need to know the actual values of the atomic radius, 
but rather simply understand the trend. You will, however, need to refer to a periodic table. Here I have a small pocket-sized periodic table that fits nicely on the screen. This comes from the University of Guelph, the university where I studied for my graduate work. They have these nice pocket-sized periodic tables that literally you can fit into your wallet. So the idea here is we want to figure out which of these elements is the largest and which is the smallest. We understand based on the trends that the largest elements will be on the left-hand side of the periodic table and down towards the bottom. So that of course this will be barium, the smallest elements will be on the right-hand side of the periodic table and towards the top and that of course will be oxygen. I'm going to start with barium and then make some comparisons relative to barium. And then I'm going to move up, let's say, the periodic table. So strontium, calcium, and then I see, well, just to the right of calcium is scandium. So scandium must be smaller than calcium. Okay, I can move across the periodic table, which of course the elements are getting smaller to gallium. So gallium will be smaller than scandium. Next, I can move up the periodic table. So up to aluminum, and then to boron, and then to carbon. Carbon is smaller than boron. Boron is smaller than aluminum. And then finally, of course, oxygen will be smaller than carbon. So if we ask you to make these kinds of comparisons, it has to be that there is a possibility of making the predictions. So in all these cases, and going from one element to the next, we're moving up and to the right of the periodic table. So in a sense, I've answered the question, but one of the problems is sometimes when students answer this question, they have the correct order, but they have it reversed. And it's hard for me to know whether the student really does understand that oxygen is smaller in this case and the barium is the largest. So in addition to making the list, it's a good idea to use the greater than symbol. So here we're literally showing that barium is larger than scandium, which is larger than gallium, and so on not only make the list, but use the greater than symbol. Okay, so we've looked at a number of features concerning the atomic radius, and all of these are the sorts of skills that you should be able to apply concerning a trend. We have two more trends to look at. One is the ionization energy, and then next the electronegativity.